Welcome to Midwest Sports Net. I'm Joey McWilliams. Privileged today to be joined on the summit by the new head women's basketball coach at Oklahoma City University, Coach Chris Siegenthaler, who is in her first season there with the program. And Coach, welcome to the Sooner Athletic Conference. I know you've been around the Oklahoma City area now for four or five months, and you've had a chance to get to know a little bit about the program and more. Tell us uh, what you know about Oklahoma City University and the SAC as well. Yeah, Joey, thanks for having me. I'm extremely excited to be in a tough Sooner Athletic Conference uh, League. Um, just coming out with the uh, preseason poll, um, you know, Wayland Baptist is number 10 in the nation uh, nationally right now. Um, know Jason really well uh, from my loyal New Orleans days uh, last year, um, competing against uh, Wayland Baptist in Texas. Um, you know, alongside that, we open up with number two <laughs> uh, ranked um, Texas Wesleyan inside the um, conference. And then on the road with USAO, who is ranked number four, um, chosen in kind of just the Sooner Athletic Conference. So um, we will be battle tested straight out of the gate. I'm extremely excited about that because we'll find out how tough we are. Um, but, you know, I think we have a really tough and scrappy squad and I'm really excited to get after it um, on the Sooner Athletic Conference end. And then here at OCU, I just, you know, they're known for their national dominance. If you've been in the NAI, you know nine NAI national championships. You know, I try to put that in perspective for prospects. Um, you know, UConn women's basketball ranks 11, uh, UCLA men's basketball ranks 10th, and then uh, or ranks uh, next with 10. And then you guess who's third? OCU. <laughs> That's right. With nine NAI national championships. And it's just putting it in perspective for prospects. They don't really get that. No way. Seriously, you rank up there with NCAA D1s. And, and so just trying to kind of highlight the, the prestige that um, and national dominance that OCU has. It's a fantastic program. It's, it's a big legacy. And, and congratulations to you for getting to be a part of that. And let me ask you about that really quickly. After a number of years as an assistant coach, this is your first opportunity to, to move, up the, move a seat up the bench, if you will. Talk about that and what that means to you. I'm excited. It, it's been a dream. Uh, you know, I've always wanted to be a head coach. Um, basketball kind of runs in, in uh, my blood a little bit. My uncle is a um, AD and a high school um, coach. And then my uh, uh, cousin is a high school uh, track um, coach. So coaching kind of runs in the blood. Uh, I've been playing ball since I was three. Um, and it's just something that I just really wanted to take on. You know, I'm in this industry to influence the next generation of leaders. Um, that's why I do what I do. Um, I really like the sports end of it because it really puts um, these individuals in adverse situations and how do you handle it? And then just really coaching them through that. And at the end of the day, you know, the, the huge motto in our, inside our program is leave your legacy. And we are on the hunt for prospects that want to leave their legacy on and off the hardwood. And, you know, if they're not interested in that, then we're not interested. And, you know, I tell them, I said, our program's not built for everyone. You know, we are looking for those, those uh, prospects that are intentional um, you know, we just did Habitat for Humanity on Saturday where we went and built a house. I think it's extremely important to get out um, in OKC and also here in OCU and just trying to build those leaders. We really want to make them competitive um, for when they graduate. You know, you don't just have someone now that has just graduated with a business degree. You know, they've, they've been competitive as a student athlete. Um, they have been putting, put in situations where they've built houses for Habitat for Humanity. What, what sets you apart for your, comp for your competition? And that is what we're trying to really coach these young, uh, young adults. Well, Coach, you've been there for a few months now, long enough to have already brought in some new players to be a part of the program, some transfers that have come in from the Division II level as well as some junior college and, and uh, five that were listed a little bit earlier back in, in August for you to bring in four of those coming from the Sooner State as well. So some local products that are, are coming into OCU. Talk about your, your transfers and the newcomers. Yeah, we're extremely excited. Um, we think that Casey Gorman on the inside transfer from Fort Smith out of Arkansas, D2, um, has, a, has a really high ceiling, has a chance to, to really, um, you know, be a face-up attack, real, real long and lanky. Um, you know, he's really skilled developed just from coming in the preseason until now. Really extremely excited about that. Um, alongside him, you have Amaya Gordon and Ray Osborne, who transferred in from Seminole State. Um, who have that kind of just that pit bull, that scoring mentality that um, is really going to bring an edge to us. And I'm, I'm really excited about um, you have Howard, Amaya Howard, that um, is coming in as a point guard, just real solid. 
um, crafty little point guard. I'm just like, I don't know how you score some of the time, but I'm like, it just really sneaky. Um, and then um, look at Reagan uh, Travis, um, also coming in from a junior college out of Texas, um, who I think is, is got some next level skill uh, that is just same hand, same foot finishes. That is just, you can tell has been skilled trained um, and just comes natural. Um, and so I'm excited to really see how Reagan kind of continues to strengthen and build. Uh, but, you know, we're all, we're all so new, um, new head coach, you know, five new players, six new players. And then we have six com- current players coming back with my assistant Taylor, who has been here as well. So we're also new, um, but we are inch by inch getting the hang of it. And we are, we're competing hard. Um, and that's what we're looking for. We're looking to be really scrappy, really tough. You have to be in the Sooner Athletic Conference. Um, you know, they sent four to the national tournament last year. So um, you, you got to be, got to be ready. We're visiting with coach Chris Siegenthaler from Oklahoma City University in her first season with the program. And coach, you do have some of those players that do return assistant coach as well. Uh, talk about those players and then how's the chemistry going as, as you're mixing, it sounds to be pretty close to about a 50, 50 mix of, of new and former players. Yeah, it's great. I mean, we had two, um, we have two leading scorers uh, from last season returning in, in uh, AD, Don, and then Fiona Wilson, um, who I know Stradley Gate are going to be kind of locked down on the Student Athletic Conference in their competition. They're going to know they're going to go after them and, and say, hey, we're going to force somebody else to, to score against you. Uh, we know it's coming, um, but those two have really stepped up and kind of at the point guard and forward position kind of leading us right now. Um, and so we're really looking to, to them. And then you have Kelsey uh, Fitzgerald, who also is a sharpshooter coming back. And then um, Elaine Witt, who I'm, I'm really excited about. I think, you know, um, she's got a chance to really kind of have a breakout season for us. Um, but I think that's the thing is they're, they're really not – they don't really understand how much they have in the tank. And I think they're starting to realize that, you know, we're going to push them to the edge. And, you know, if you want to be good, then, then you can be. But, you, you know, we have a saying in our locker room, you can't cheat the grind. It won't give you anything that you haven't earned. And so, you know, if you want to, if you want to be elite, that's another slogan of ours. Elite is earned. If you want to, if you want to be elite, then you have to put, you know, the grind in uh, to be, you know, elite. And so I think they're starting to kind of get the hang of what it takes to be competitive. I know we kind of um, talked about, um, you know, it's my first head coaching job, kind of going back to my kind of assistant coach coaching stops. You know, I, I know we were talking, Joey, kind of cutting up uh, about being a grad assistant. I was a grad assistant um, at Shorter <laughs> under Vic Mitchell. I uh, really got a lot of experience. I'll, I'll never forget. He set me down and he said, hey, do you really want to get into this business? You know, it's it's cutthroat. The money's not in it. But like I said, you know, I talked earlier about it. I'm not doing it for the money. You know, I understand it pays the bills at the end of the day, but it's all about having that influence. If you can influence one individual, then you've done your job. You know, I hope to I hope to influence a lot more than one. But, um, you know, he taught me a lot. And then I went to uh, Faulkner University uh, for three years under Reed Sutton, Um, you know, really coming off of they started the program in 2010, taking over kind of into that 2013, 14 season and really kind of trying to continue to build. Um, Then I I went to Auburn University of Montgomery, um, who was jumping to the NCAA D2 and I was a D2 athlete myself. And at the in the Gulf South, and we were getting into that conference, and um, you know there's some tough players in the, in the D2, kind of just showing, you know, it really taught us we had to bring nine in to recruit, um, and so really kind of having to get after it and bringing a high cal- high caliber player um, to compete inside the Gulf South and bringing in nine players, which is, I mean, I haven't recruited nine players to bring in in, in all my career, <laughs> and so that was a challenge, and um, and then jump uh, then you know, transitioning into Loyola New Orleans where I had a lot of success. Um, so I know what it takes to kind of build, you know, establish and sustain that success. And I, I got a lot from Loyola New Orleans, you know, um, Kelly Kennedy there, um, you know, really taught me kind of how, how to recruit that D1 athlete, um, how to really uh, sustain success. And that's really all about adjustments and really about execution. Um, and we had a lot of success, you know, went against um, some tough competition, uh, ran into number 13, Carroll, in the NAI National Tournament. Um, six points for making it to the Sweet 16. Um, so knowing kind of what it takes, but just gratitude from where I've came from to now. Um, I, I think, you know, a, a lot of <laughs> uh, a lot of coaches are like, you're a coach, you're not a player. Like, you know, I have that kind of young look. And, um, you know, I've, I knew this was something that I wanted to pursue since I was young. And 
you know, like I said, you know, for any individual that wants to be a head coach or, or to get to where they want to get, you know, you really have to put in the grind, put in the hours where, you know, it's not seen, you know, because that's the thing. I think as coaches, it's, oh, we just roll the balls out and we coach them and it's strategy. And it's, it's not that it is a business. It is about influencing, you know, these athletes and, you know, they do have struggles and, you know, just being there for them and fighting for them. Um, you know, you look at those really good teams. It has nothing to do with strategy. It has all to do with is the coach invested in the player and does a player trust the coach back? And uh, so we're in the process of really building that. But I'm going to tell you, you know, um, I inherited some of these players, but these are my players and I wouldn't want to go to battle with anyone else. So I'm, I'm really excited about the season. I appreciate that, Coach. And by the way, let, let me uh, just uh, remind you, don't, don't disparage that youthful look, okay? You want to, <laughs> want to keep that around as absolutely as long as, as possible. Uh, the season gets underway, Coach, in, in uh, 10 days from this recording. So uh, November 11th, uh, you're on the road for a Friday and a Saturday in Kansas against Southwestern and against Friends. Against Friends, as you mentioned, also the Student Athletic Conference gets underway just right after that, mm -hmm. a whole matchup with Texas Wesleyan on November 17th. Talk about the opening to your schedule. Yeah, you know, we're excited. Um, I, I kind of talked on the, the Sooner Athletic Conference in, and we're going to be battle-tested uh, battle straight out of the gate. And I'm excited about that. You know, I want to see where we fall. But, you know, we can't get uh, – we can't fast-forward to the Sooner Athletic Conference just yet. You know, we do have some non-conference battles, um, and we're really excited to go on the road. Um, I've always kind of said, you know, road warriors, you know. And so I'm looking forward to just really seeing straight out of the gate how, you know, how we compete. Um, I just really want us to be tough and scrappy. Um, you know, that's what I'm looking for, you know, each day really trying to build that reputation of, you know, that OCU squad is just tough. Like they're tough defensively. They're tough to put away. You know, we're, we're not going, we're not going, we're not going anywhere, you know, and that's, I, I you know, I, we were picked seventh in a, you know, in the preseason poll, you know, I told our players, I said, I, I can, that, that's not important to me. Um, in all seriousness, I'm focused on the here and now, you know, pick us you know, seventh, but, you know, we can make some noise at this thing and or some noise inside the Sooner Athletic Conference. And and so, you know, right right now we're focused on the here and now and just trying to get 1% better. That's another motto, stronger than yesterday. When we end the day, we want to we want to feel like we left nothing on the hardwood. And so um, that's our focus right now and just taking it one day at a time. But we really are excited to go on the road and battle someone new. We've had two scrimmages already against Redlands and against um, – Seminole State and so they really kind of uh, challenged us on some things and and it was nice to compete and kind of see where we were um a couple of weeks ago and so now you know it's like I tell them it gets real it's here you know under 10 days and um now we've got to go out and execute you know and so how do you handle adversity you know you'll go on the road in situations and I really want to see how we get challenged and how we handle that challenge and so um, I'm extremely excited and then of course um the men's um the men's team also plays alongside us um, after friends. So I'm excited to see, you know, kind of the brother sport playing alongside us. And um, uh, Barakoff, he's been great. He's taken me in and uh, I'll go and pick his brain about a few things. Hey, coach, you know, uh, what, what's your thoughts on this, this pick and run? I like to call it a pick and run instead of pick and roll. And um, so he, he's a great guy. I'm really looking forward to just kind of getting after it this season. Well, don't tell him I, I said this because it's going to sound like an old joke, but coach Barakoff has been around for a while. So he does He's, I'm sure he's, he's acquired a lot of wisdom in, in his time. Coach, I think you've answered this already, but I want to give you a chance to, to maybe put it into words as we wrap up our time together because you've talked about themes and, and different things that you want to get across. When uh, OCU fans come to watch your teams play, as, as now you put your stamp on the program, what, what are those fans going to expect to see? So scrappy and tough. You know, I, want, I, want, I want everybody inside our program to know that uh, we're, we're built different. You know, we are. We're trying to build um, – those that want to leave their legacy on and off the hardwood. That's, that's the most important thing to me. Um, and, you know, right now in the recruiting process, as we shift to the 2023, you know, we are looking for those intangibles, those prospects that want to leave a legacy prospects that are just competitive. Um, and like I said, tough and scrappy. Um, I showed, I showed the team um, on straight out of the gate at YouTube Um it was a naval uh, commander, I think, it, it was did um, Texas commencement speech, and he talks about this five foot five boat and how they were kind of picked on and they were short. They came from all different backgrounds, and you know he goes on to say that they outswam and they outhustled everyone. And you know at the end of the day, they, those were the ones that really kind of 
you know, achieved getting through um, the, you know, the U.S. Marines training. And so, you know, I, I talk about that with our team a lot about, hey, we're that five foot five boat. We might not be the most athletic. We might not be the most skilled, but hey, you know, we can be the toughest. We can be the scrappiest because I guarantee you we will we will we will probably be the one that's like, ah, yeah, I, I picked Texas, Texas Wesson on this one. Oh, yeah, I picked USAO. Oh, yeah, I picked Wayland Baptist you know, or, or mid-America, you know, um, Christian. But at the end of the day, you know, it's all about, I've told him, it's all about who's in this huddle, who's in this locker room. You know, if you if you want to if you want to compete straight out of the gate, and we can do that. Um, and so just really trying to instill that confidence. And um, I'm looking forward to it, Joey. I really am. <laughs> well, Coach, I'm looking forward to watching you all play as well. And and uh, I will say I, I appreciate what you're talking about in legacy and, and looking and researching what what you've brought to to OCU already you know words like integrity and character and those those are the things that you're looking for in your athletes along with the the, the skills on the court as well but I think those are things that are going to be a hallmark and, and if you're seeking those things that is to not only your benefit but to theirs as well coach Chris Siegenthaler the new head coach at Oklahoma City University again the stars get underway on the road first game of the season this is going to be at Southwestern and that's up in Winfield, Kansas on November 11th and then first home game, November 17th. Coach, thank you for taking time with us today here on the Summit. We will follow your program. Thanks, Joey. Appreciate you.